Hello, everyone, and welcome to the AmeriCorps State and National Symposium 2020 walkthrough. We wanted to take a little bit of time to make sure that you had all the information that you needed to successfully attend our virtual symposium this year. This year, our symposium is being held from September 15th to the 17th with pre-symposium network events taking place on Monday, September 14th. This is a required annual grantee training for AmeriCorps state and national prime grantees, which includes our state commissions, national directs, and tribal grantees. This year's symposium, obviously, is going to be held virtually to ensure the health and safety of our attendees, presenters, and staff during these unprecedented times. This webinar itself is going to cover the symposium virtual format, pre-symposium networking events, discussion boards, ASN 2020 mobile application, and some additional Zoom trainings. I know a lot of that might sound a little foreign right now, but believe me, we will get more in detail as we go along. We've had to make some major adjustments this year to ensure that you all receive quality training and updates as you would normally if you were attending in person in DC. As a result, we have decided to break up the workshop training content into two parts to accommodate assess accessibility for all attendees. We'll have pre-recorded content and then we'll have live discussion content via Zoom. The pre-recorded and live discussion Zoom links will be included in the agenda that will enable participants to join. All of the links are available on our event website, and I will cover how to log in and access those links here in a little bit. As part of our virtual format, we are also offering participants the ability to engage with online discussion boards. And like I said, we will cover those here in a second. So I'm going to pull up the event website so that you guys all know how to access the, the Zoom links and the pre-recorded content and materials that you can easily navigate this starting on the 14th. So when you click on the event website link, which if you have registered or if you've received any of the communications from us over the last couple of months, you should already have access to. Um, this warning is gonna come up regardless every time you open the website. We apologize, we cannot make it go away. So just go ahead and X that out. Then you will see our general website. This is what you see when you are not logged in. So we do have some information available to those who are not already registered. But in order to access the content for the week of, including all the Zoom links and other resources, you will have to log in. In order to do that, you're gonna to scroll to the bottom of the page. But before I get there, I do wanna highlight, this is where you can find information on how to download our mobile application. All the way at the bottom, you're gonna click already registered. Now here, you're gonna enter in your email address and your confirmation number. When you registered, you should have received an automated confirmation email that would include that confirmation number for you. So now that I am logged in, you will see a bunch of other tabs pop up here. Now, when you first log in on Monday, or if you're trying this in advance, some of these tabs will not be evident to you right away. That is because we are gonna be publishing them on a scheduled format. Um, so on Monday, you will be able to see Monday, September 14th, but you may not be able to see Thursday. That is because we are publishing, like I said, um, based on the day and when you need those resources. That way we don't have people who are quick to skip ahead. Um, and you're getting the resources as they are needed throughout the week. I'm gonna start first by clicking on Monday. So as I mentioned before, Monday is our pre-symposium content. And what we've did is we have organized some virtual networking sessions for you all. We recognize that part of the experience of attending our symposium every year is to engage with your peers, to share stories, to share best practices, to just have conversations in the hallways. And we recognize that that's something that we are missing in this virtual format. We are trying our best to replicate that um, through these pre-symposium virtual networking sessions. So hopefully you find some value in that and you have some good takeaways. As I scroll down the page, 
you will see we have a pre-work session section which allows you to go through and download any of the agendas, the participant list, so you can see who all is attending the symposium if they've registered for, prior to our deadline, um, and then organizational summaries. These are items that you would have received in print form at the symposium, so now we're just doing it virtually. These are also accessible on the agenda tab here, but we wanted to make sure on the first day that you had access to those. Um, before I move on to the schedule content, I do want to note that everything that we are doing on the event website is in Eastern Standard Time. So if you're tuning in from the West Coast, you might have to make some mental adjustments on that and even for our friends that are in various other time zones. Um, just make sure that you're aware that all times listed here and in the agenda are all East Coast time. So for our Monday session to get started. We will kick it off with a 1 p.m. virtual networking session with our ORO colleagues, which is a nice meet and greet. You can tune in based on which region you are a part of to be able to access the content and to engage with staff from those regions. When you log in or when you want to access the session, you're just going to click on this. What it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and just automatically open up Zoom and then you'll be able to access that session. I'll go in later in this webinar recording to go over some details on how to navigate Zoom, so I'm going to pause on that, but right now focusing on the website, this is how you would access those Zoom links. So we go down the schedule, you will see at two o'clock we have another networking session that's focused on program management during COVID, three o'clock, filling the core. So as you're interested, you can join these sessions um, and engage with your peers that way. I'm gonna jump ahead to Wednesday because I wanna focus on some of the workshop content and pre-work that we have established. But when you do log into this website, you can you can explore the tabs as they're available to you. Um, Tuesday is is very similar. We don't have any workshops yet, um, but we do have some directions and information for you all as you're navigating as you are navigating these tabs, including pre-work. So pre-work for Tuesday is just accessing the discussion board for the tribal advisory group meeting. Obviously, this is focused specifically to our tribal grantees. So if you're not a tribal grantee, no need to click here on this pre-work. And again, here's the rest of the schedule for Tuesday. I'm gonna note down here, when I keep talking about pre-work, um, it'll be more evident when I click on the Wednesday tab, but we do plan to publish all of the pre-work at 4 p.m. East Coast time. This is to make sure that our West Coast colleagues have the afternoon to work through the pre-work um, as they're able, and that our East Coast friends can access the pre-work the morning of the session. So if you're in the East Coast, most of your sessions are going to be starting at one o'clock. That means you have the whole morning to start to work on pre-work. So that's why we are publishing it at 4 p.m. the day before so that when you wake up in the morning, it's already ready for you. For our West Coast friends, we didn't want to ask you to wake up at five o'clock in the morning to start any of our sessions or, or review our content. So that's why we're publishing it at 4 p.m. East Coast time. So then you have the evening the day before to be able to access that content. I'll review that again later because I know that might have been a little bit confusing, but we wanted to accommodate everyone's schedules. Scrolling up here to Wednesday. This is when the pre-work tab becomes really important. Um, so obviously for this day, we have our CNCS leadership plenary, our national direct and tribal grantee town halls, which include a couple of discussion boards. Um, so for the CNCS plenary, we will also have some recorded content here from our CNCS management leaders, um, and senior leaders at the agency. You'll be able to go through those recordings and then you can click on our discussion board to leave questions and I will review that in more detail here in a moment. For the workshop blocks, this is kind of what I was talking about when I said when you, you wanna log on early and get the pre-work done ahead of time before the actual scheduled live discussion sessions, which are listed later in this schedule. But to focus right now, I wanna to go to the pre-work. 
each workshop session and some of our plenary sessions, as you can see up here, is going to have pre-recorded content. So our expectation is that you visit this page the day before or the morning of these workshops or these presentations, that you click on the workshop or plenary recordings. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up a YouTube page for you. This is where we have posted the pre-work um, or pre-presentations from our presenters. So you can see here I'm using the understanding the OIG audit process from start to finish as an example. Our colleagues Monique and Cindy have worked really hard to pre-record their content so you have access to it prior to the live discussion. So we can really utilize the live discussion time to answer questions and to engage with the audience. Whereas the presentation is being held on YouTube so you can access the information there. Going back to our event page, so I'm going to keep using this one as an example. After you've watched the workshop recording, none of them should be, be more than 45 minutes, so hopefully that helps with your planning process. But after you finish the workshop recording, you can then click on the discussion board. The discussion board is essentially an online Word document. Um, which is open to editing from anyone who clicks on it. What this looks like for this specific workshop, the IG audit process, is we've provided information on presenters, the training objectives, discussion board objectives. You can review that. It's going to be different for each workshop. So each presenter has developed their own content. Um, so based on what you're choosing to attend, um, after you've looked at the schedule, after you've, you've, re you've reviewed the mobile application and set your schedule, that's how you're going to know which one to be accessing. So again, I'm just scrolling down um, from there for their online discussion board. Here they have a section that's questions from the field. So this is what I was saying, that this is an online interactive element that we've included this year. What you're going to do is you're going to hit that edit button for the, the Word document. It might take a second to load. But essentially now you're going to be able to edit this document. Obviously, we ask that you respect the content that's already preloaded um, and do not delete any of the content, but only add if you have feedback or questions or if there's been some kind of prompt from the presenters. So again, this is a prompt from the presenters. They say, please ask questions. Um, I've already put in here, tell me more about specific audit findings. And then just because I wanted them to know who asked this question, I also included my name and then my agency. Um, you can do whatever you feel comfortable with, but I do recommend this so that the presenters can incorporate this into their live discussion time. So like I said, you can add other questions. And everyone is gonna be able to see that who is accessing the discussion board. Once you're done with that, you can scroll down. There might be other things that the presenters have included in these discussion boards for you to engage with. Um, obviously, they have some resources here. They've also provided some questions for you. So you can go through and look at this, think about it before the actual live discussion presentation, because um, it's likely they're going to be addressing some of these questions in their presentation. So that's just an example from our peers in the IG office or IG audit. Um, as you can see, this is I'm still on the pre work for Wednesday. Each session has will have a workshop recording and a discussion board. So again, as you're developing your schedule, you decide that you're going to take the best practices and evaluation reporting session. Um, you want to access the workshop recording first, engage with the discussion board so that you are prepared for the live discussion content. And I'm scrolling down here. These are the timed events. Again, everything is in East Coast time. So we have our leadership plenary for this. The pre-work was for you to read to see if there's any recordings for you to engage with. And then the discussion board, which for the plenaries is generally just for you to submit your questions ahead of time so we can prepare our responses. Then you have our workshop block live discussion. 
So again, if you've decided to attend this program or this workshop presentation, hopefully you've already reviewed the recording, you've already engaged in the discussion board, and now you're ready to just join this link once it is 2 p.m. on Wednesday. After you have attended the live discussion session via the Zoom link and the session is over, we do ask that you come back here because we have workshop evaluations for each of our presentations. Um, it's just a really simple SurveyMonkey link for you to leave your feedback for the presenter themselves. So keep scrolling down Wednesday's page. Our second workshop block starts at 3 p.m. So hopefully you've created your schedule, you've picked which, which workshop you would like to attend, you've already attended the pre-recorded content, you've checked out their discussion board, and you'll be ready to join this session via the Zoom link at 3 p.m. on Wednesday. So I keep scrolling down, we have the National Direct Tribal Grantee Town Hall, and then a plenary that we hope that you all will be able to attend. The very bottom here, you'll see we have the Thursday pre-work available. Again, this will be uploaded at 4 p.m. East Coast time on Wednesday so that our West Coast people have access to it that evening and that our East Coast people can get to work right on it right away on Thursday morning. Thursday looks pretty similar to what Wednesday did as it's our second round of workshop blocks. We've added the pre-work here for the town hall. So uh, commissions, if you have questions that you anticipate that you'll be asking during the town hall, you can submit them here. Um, this is a way for you to hopefully get your questions in. We're not always sure how many questions that we will receive during this time, but if you submit them ahead of time, we can prepare the responses and be able to incorporate them. So you're more likely to get, to get that question answered versus the chat, whereas if we have obviously 50 people submitting their questions, we might not get to all of them. So this one kind of gives you a little bit of a leg up or an advance um, as far as submitting your questions. Workshop block, block three, it's the same setup the same way, your workshop recordings and your discussion boards based on the workshop that you are choosing to attend starting at 1 p.m. East Coast time. Sorry, 2 p.m. East Coast time, here you go. And that's all included in your agendas. Um, so you can reference those for your mobile application as well. It's workshop block four. And then to close out our symposium this year, we'll be ending with the Excellence in AmeriCorps Award ceremony, which will then just lead right into the closing plenary as well. We didn't want to ask you to sign out and then sign back in, so we'll just kind of move right into closing after the award ceremony. We do have our award ceremony handout, so on Thursday this will be available for you to look at to celebrate the awardees that were selected this year. Hopefully that provided you a little bit of insight into the format that we are using this year for a virtual symposium. Again, these tabs will be published daily, um, but if you log in on Monday, Thursday will not be available quite yet. These first four tabs, however, five tabs, are all available um, regardless if you're signed in or not, and so you'll be able to access the agenda and information um, in order for you to start to set your schedule for the symposium this year. All right, and continue on through our presentation. So as you saw on the Monday tab, we have our networking sessions. We are really excited for these virtual networking opportunities. Starting at 1 p.m., we will have a meet and greet with the Office of Regional Operations. You saw on that tab that we've broken it up by region, so make sure to join the region that you are located in in order to engage with staff from that office. Two, we will have a program management during COVID-19 networking session. Three, filling the core strategies for member recruitment. Again, all of this is intended for you to share best practices with your peers. Um, so we will not be providing pre-established content. This is not a time to 
um, learn from CNCS on, on recruitment strategies that we've, or resources that we've used for that. We have an actual workshop that's focused on that. This is for you to share with each other um, best practices that you are using. Again, we're trying to recreate as much as possible those in the hallway uh, conversations or, or networking that you might do in an in-person session. During the networking sessions, it will start with a welcome from the CNCS facilitator. Um, again, these are, these are unique opportunities and they're self-facilitated by participants. So when you click the link on your session, you'll be welcomed by the facilitator and you will join the large group. The facilitator will review the topic and other guidelines and then participants will be sent into breakout groups, so a little bit smaller to allow you to engage with each other. The number of people in your breakout room is really going to depend on the number of people that log on to the session. The goal of the breakout space is to create a space more for more intimate conversations. Once the groups are broken up, you will be provided with prompts to share best practice or strategies on the topic and then to pose any questions or challenges to the group that you may want support on in troubleshooting through. You will then engage in a discussion with each other and after 20 minutes, you're going to be reject, redirected back into the large group to debrief the discussions. If you are participating in an oral meet and greet session, so again, the ones that are broken up by region, these sessions are going to be structured a little differently as a goal for this is for you to learn for regional updates and to meet oro staff from your region. So each of the regions have created their own specific schedule and set up for those sessions. In order to make the most of this networking session, it's important to do some pre-work before it begins. So we're all about pre-work this year. If you're attending a topic-based session, jot down your own resources, best practices, and strategies, and or areas that you may be looking for support on. This way, you will be prepared with information to contribute to the discussion. It's also important to identify your own personal goals prior to the session, whether it's meeting new colleagues, acquiring resources, or getting support from other grantees. Knowing your goals will help get what you want out of the session. Finally, these networking sessions are the true definition of getting out what you put in. Engage with your peers in the comments, questions, and suggestions, and you will be able to equally take away your own resources. We have a list of things that we recommend that you do before the symposium, so hopefully before Monday. Um, make sure to download the mobile application. As I stated before, our event website is, is useful for accessing the links and the content, but the mobile application really allows you to create your own schedule, to engage with your peers, to access some of the other information. So it's good to look at it now and you can start to get familiar with it and explore the different um, options that you have through that. And I'll cover some of that a little, in a little bit. Um, download the Zoom app. We found it's easier to access Zoom from the desktop application. Um, so whatever computer or device you are working from, um, make sure that you have access to Zoom. It's, you can create a free account. Um, and so that should be pretty easy to, to navigate. I would also encourage you to visit the ASN Symposium website to get familiar with the content that's there. Again, we will be uploading um, information as it goes on throughout the week. So you won't see everything that we saw in this preview presentation, but you will be able to access a lot of the basic information right now. As far as participant expectations, again, please download and test the system so you're familiar with it. Review the recorded presentations prior to the live workshop discussion and plenaries. If you don't take this step and, and make sure that you're attending the, those pre-recorded sessions or engaging with, and engaging with the discussion boards, um, the live discussion may kind of go right over your head. So we, the expectation is that you have reviewed that content prior to the live discussion. So make sure that you're doing that because your presenters um, will be ready to just jump right in to the topics, um, knowing that you have already received some of the basic information that they will be reviewing. We encourage you to participate in the discussion board activities. Again, a lot of that, there'll be sections for you to leave questions um, so that the presenters can incorporate that right away into their live discussion. 
Um, so we encourage you to do that. And if they have additional activities, definitely make sure you are engaging with those discussion boards. Attend the live workshop discussions. Obviously, this is as close as we can get to in person. So we wanted to make the most of your time um, in allowing you to attend those live sessions. So make sure that you are you're ready to go, you've got all the information that you need and that you're prepared to engage in discussion and, and questions with the presenters during those live times. Again, a quick reminder that we do have those evaluations for all of the presentations via a SurveyMonkey link, so we do encourage your feedback. We look at that every year and we try to adapt. This is a quick review on the discussion boards. So again, the discussion boards allow you all to provide feedback, ask questions, or participate in written activities prior to the live streaming session, depending on the presentation type. As a reminder, the discussion boards will be open at 4 p.m. East Coast time, the day prior to the live discussion, and they are gonna close at 12 p.m. East Coast time, the day of the presentation. I don't believe I mentioned that earlier. So it's important to know that as you're preparing for your live discussion or live plenary sessions, that those discussion boards will be closed and you will not be able to continue editing them after 12 p.m. This is because we wanted to give presenters enough time to review your questions, to review your feedback, to be able to inc incorporate that into their live discussion. So we needed to have a little bit of time for them to review that. So they will close at 12 p.m. You will not be able to provide any additional content or if you do, the presenters will not see it. Next up, the Symposium app. Um, again, I think I've mentioned this on several calls over the last couple months. Um, I'm really excited about it. I hope you are too. We had this last year. I think with the in-person, it wasn't as um, critical for your attendance, but this year, virtual, it's, it's become a little bit more critical as far as being able to navigate our online symposium. Information here is, is also included on the website, so definitely feel free to visit that so you can make sure to download the application. In navigating the application, it allows you really to stay up to date with up to the minute we'll be sending out alerts, we can send out information um, via the app, so that's, that's another reason to have it downloaded. It allows you to access who the speakers are and see what their bios. It allows you access to sessions and just overall event information. You can receive real-time communication from our event managers. So that could be coming from me, can be coming from our contract team. You can build your own schedule. This is my favorite part of the application or the app is that you can build your schedule by bookmarking sessions as you're looking through the schedule. You can see what's going on currently and what's up next. You can take notes within the app and then ex export them so you can reference them later. So if you're attending a workshop session, um, you don't wanna use your computer because you're paying attention via Zoom, you can actually use your application to take some notes during the presentation. Also, one of my other favorite aspects of the application format or the application uh, tool is that you can chat with and find attendees that are also attending the symposium. So again, we try to incorporate some networking in the beginning of the symposium, but if you see um, your, your colleague that you haven't seen since last year's symposium on the participant list, or they've created a profile, you can actually add each other as friends and you can message back and forth via the application. When you first download the app, um, there will be help that pops up to help you navigate the different sections. So it kind of explains it for you as you first have downloaded it. Um, that's helpful for those that maybe this is your first year attending the symposium. If you were here last year, it might have already done this with the 2019 app. Um, so if you still have that on your computer or on your phone, excuse me, um, you might need to click the settings gear and choose exit event in order to make the 2020 version available. So make sure you're in the right year. Here's a screenshot of what the app will look like on your phone as you've downloaded it. Um, so you can see there's several different buttons that you can access information from. We have our message center where you can create your profile, message other attendees and receive conference alerts. 
Um, your settings will help you kind of navigate how you want to engage with the app throughout the event. And then updates, that's also important sometimes to just randomly click that button because it refreshes the app with the most recent updates. So if we've sent out a communication, um, you might need to refresh in order to see that. So I do recommend to do that throughout the day, um, but hopefully your, your app will notify you if any uh, messages come to you directly. Here are some of the other icons that you'll see when you're in the app. We have our sessions, which has all the sessions, handout, and related speaker information located um, as you go through the schedule there. You can add a session to your schedule by using the star icon. And then you can also download the handouts and take notes via this, this icon. You can access your schedule as if you've gone through the sessions and you've starred a couple, then you can go to your schedule and it'll display the events that you've added. We have information on most of our speakers, including their bio. So you can take a, take a look at the credentials and, and the experience that your speakers have. And then again, that attendees list, um, anyone who has created a public profile. So again, you'll have to go and do that yourself once you, you download the app. But once you've created that public profile, you can include your contact information. Um, so if you are in a networking session or you're in a workshop and you hear some really great ideas, from a program and you're like, I can, I can incorporate that into my own, you can actually privately message them and, and start that conversation to be able to share those resources and network with your peers. In this presentation, we've also included some general Zoom training links for those of you that may not be familiar with this platform. Um, we will include a PDF version of this presentation. So these links will be active in that and that's how you can access uh, the, these resources. If you are not familiar with Zoom, we do ask that you take some time prior to the symposium to become a little bit familiar with it. Um, we will utilize this for our live discussions um, and it's really, and even some of the plenaries and everything too. So it's, it's important that you are familiar with this platform. To quickly review some basics though, while we have you on the line or while you are attending, um, after you download Zoom on your desktop, you can sign in. Again, it's a free account. Um, from there, you'll be able to click on the live Zoom links that are available on the website and Zoom will just pop up for you. Uh, so that's how you'll be able to participate in our live sessions. We took a quick screenshot from one of the trainings here. Um, you do have controls while you are attending the Zoom live trainings. So a, a bar will show up at the bottom of your screen. That's how you're gonna access the chat. It's how you're gonna to respond to polls. It's how you're gonna submit your Q&A. Um, so be prepared to see that at the bottom of your screen and you can also leave here. So um, obviously the first couple you might be learning, but hopefully by the end of the symposium, you're gonna be a Zoom attendee pro. Um, feel free to reach out to us if you have any issues though, as we want to make sure that you are able to attend and enjoy our symposium as much as possible. Again, we have included some links. You can access these via the PDF version of this presentation that was also included in your logistics email. Finally, if you have questions, you're definitely free to email ASN training at cns.gov. Um, we will be pretty busy during the week, so I cannot promise our turnaround time as far as responses. Another way to, to get support or to ask for help um, is also available here on the event website. I think no matter what page you are on, on the event website, this contact us button will always appear. So if you have questions, you can click that button and hopefully we can get back to you to resolve whatever issues or conflicts that you are having in order for you to attend our session. With that, I know it's a lot of information. I promise it will get easier once you attend your first couple of sessions. Um, I hope that you enjoy the symposium this year. We appreciate your patience. I know that it's been, it was a quick pivot, um, so we didn't quite get the information out to you as early as we would have liked, but hopefully this helps you um, be able to navigate the virtual symposium this year. I thank you all for your time and I wish you luck. Um, and hopefully we will be able to see each other again soon. Thank you so much.